Ever since I started making videos, I've always wanted to do a tribute video of my home city York. With well over 2,000 years of gruesome history, York has the reputation of being the most haunted city in Britain, but also quite possibly the most haunted city in Europe. Originally a Roman town called Ibaracum, the Vikings then came and called it Jorvik. But it was the Normans who would give it its final name, York. Throughout York's violent history, there have been countless sieges, murders, executions, beheadings, hangings, and even witches being pressed to death. Not to mention the thousands who died in horrible and sometimes gruesome ways during the Black Plague. Every year there are well over 200 reported sightings of paranormal activity and over 500 reported hauntings all within the city walls themselves. We can only imagine how many more strange things go unreported. If you're into history or you're into the paranormal things of that nature then you will definitely love York and if you are from the UK and you've not yet been to York then shame on you and that needs to definitely go on your bucket list. So I hope you enjoyed this video guys and I will do my best to try and give you as many valid points on the history of some of the places that I'm about to visit. Sit back, grab yourself a coffee and enjoy. What you find a lot of in York is boards like this one behind me where businesses, pubs, restaurants, cafes, hotels will stick up boards outside their place of business to highlight the ghosts or the paranormal activity that they've had going on in there in the hope to attract customers. Um, so this one here tells a story about the ghost of Green Jenny that apparently still resides in this pub behind me. So this is the shambles. This is one of the most well-preserved Tudor streets in the world and one of York's most iconic tourist attractions. Something you might overlook or you might miss if you are a tourist and you're not on one of these tour guides that gives you this information is these little things that hang outside the shop doorways still these are the hooks that would have held the meat outside the shop windows to try and entice people in because obviously back in its day when this was operational as a Tudor road or a Tudor street a lot of these shop fronts were butchers who made a living from selling meat so you can only imagine how bad this street would have smelt given the fact that they've got raw meat hanging outside the shop windows. On top of that people or Tudors specifically were well known for just throwing out excrement, trash, rubbish, dirty water onto the streets from the windows above. Something else to look out for in York when you're out and about. You'll notice that there's just random statues of black cats sat on top of people's porchways, doorways, windowsills. And basically what that was for is during the Black Plague, people believed that having these statues of black cats would be enough to scare away any rats infested with the, bubonic, the new bonnet plague.
just a quick bit of history for you. On the 16th of March, 1190, 150 Jews were pursued by a raving mob of local people. The local people owed the Jews a lot of money and Jews being persecuted for many, many years as they have throughout history were chased down by this angry mob of locals. 150 Jews took refuge in this castle, locked themselves in. In the end, to cut a long story short, they ended up committing suicide, taking their own lives. So a lot of people killed themselves. It was a mass suicide within this very fort behind me. You can only imagine at the time the screams, the chants or the cheers from the angry mob and the worried, worried cries of the people that locked themselves in on that day. There's something amazing about being sat on this embankment at the very top. Below me I can see people stumbling home, people throwing up. Um, some people will have had a grey night, some people will probably want to forget tonight. Taxis are whizzing about, dropping people off, picking people up. And nobody knows that I'm sat up here just chilling out, watching all this go on below me. It's an amazing feeling relaxing if anything really relaxing and uh, I just love my city so much places like this especially when you just come out to these places and you just chill out at the top of here people would be like why though why do you want to do that why not why would you not want to come up here and just relax and chill out how often do people do this like as a kid I used to uh, we used to go behind the back of like Tesco's and Safeway, places like this. And they used to throw out cardboard boxes. We used to steal the cardboard boxes and we used to bring them up here to the top of the embankment, sit on our asses and just fly as fast as we could down the hill. Which looking back was probably really dangerous, but that's what you do when you're kids. And I used to love them moments. I also remember as well, just off across the road in front of me, is the River Ouse and York is renowned for the river uh, flooding and this whole street one year below me was completely flooded and me and my uh, friends decided that we would go basically swimming in the street but what an amazing experience to look down on that street and think I've swam I've swam down this street like pretty much swam we, we used to bike ride down through the water and jump off and just act like complete fools amazing This is quite interesting. These little squares that are cut out into the blocks as I walk around, I see one there. I see one there. And again, there's one there. I just wonder that when this place was in use and used as a fort, were these holes maybe had big stakes, big sharp stakes that came out and prevented people from climbing the wall or maybe something like that, I'm not sure. They will have been used for something, so if anybody knows what they were used for or if you could please give me some insight then that would be great. Another thing you'll find with York as well is that because it still does have its medieval heritage, a lot of the streets and a lot of the streets are named after gates that was once occupied and surrounding the city. So you'll find that there's Mickle Gate, Jilly Gate, Gudrum Gate, Whitmer Watmer Gate, Stone Gate, Copper Gate, and a host of many other gates.
This very street that I'm on right now has quite a spooky past. Just beyond this wall, there is the treasurer's house. And there's a famous story that involves a guy called Harry Martindale. Harry Martindale was a young apprentice at the time who was working inside the treasurer's house down in the cellar. On his first day on the job, Harry was given the task to knock a hole through the wall so cabling could be dropped down into the cellar. Harry set up his step ladders, climbed to the top and began to knock the hole through. After about 20, 30 minutes of Harry trying to get through the roof, he heard what sounded like a Roman bugle. Not quite sure if it was the guys on the next floor above listening to the radio, Harry decided to stop work, put down his tools and go see what was going on. Nobody had a clue what Harry was talking about. Harry then went back down into the cellar and continued to try and knock the hole through the roof only to hear the Roman bugle again, but this time followed by what sounded like the beating sounds of a drum. The sounds got closer and closer until eventually Harry looked down off his ladder to see what looked like the plumes of a Roman helmet coming through the wall. Completely shocked, terrified, Harry jumped off the stepladder and scurried into the corner of the cellar where he stayed. Harry was amazed to count numerous Roman soldiers walking through the wall on horseback as well so there was Roman soldiers, cavalry, flags, even the stubble. The detail was amazing. At the time when historians got hold of this story everybody passed it off as Harry's just lying because what he said was that these Roman soldiers were wearing green tunics but of course everybody knows that Romans wear red tunics. He also said that they were carrying short swords and not the typical long swords. At the time in York Rome was being attacked and a lot of the Roman soldiers were sent back to defend Rome. Roman soldiers formed an army of local Yorkists, people who lived in the York area, surrounding areas, and basically gave them green tunics and trained them, but not to the standards of a Roman soldier. And they also gave them short swords and not long swords. This was something that Harry wouldn't have known. This came out many, many years later. But if that wasn't enough to add either more authenticity to the story, when they dug below the ground, on which Harry had chose to place his stepladder, they found a Roman road. That Roman road came right across here, on this very road that I'm walking right now. That must have been one freaky, once in a lifetime kind of experience. This good looking chap behind me is Emperor Constantine, also known as Constantine the Great. And he's called Constantine the Great for very good reason. When Constantine was in York, the Roman Empire was divided into many different fractions. There was many different emperors ruling the east, ruling the north, ruling the west. The people couldn't decide who should be the one true emperor of the whole entire Roman Empire. After being successful in many different battles, and winning over the people wherever he went, Constantine was eventually decided as the one true Roman em Emperor. This statue still stands here in York outside the Minster because of how well loved Constantine was here in York. He was also a key figure in promoting Christianity at a time when Christianity was outlawed. Being from York and having grown up in York all my life and having grown up in a house which I would consider to be very active with what you can only describe as poltergeist activity and given the fact that York's got this abundance of history with Vikings, Romans, Normans, Tudors and everybody else I think you'd be very very lucky if you moved into a place here that wasn't somehow tied to ghostly activity I think you'd do very well to move into a house that hasn't got any form of history 
regarding the death or some kind of disturbing past. This building behind me is really well known for ghost sightings. The story goes that in one of these top windows every now and then you can see the little the spirit of a little girl. During the Black Plague her mum and dad were dying they were showing signs of being infected. They sent the little girl upstairs out of the way in hopes that she wouldn't get infected too but eventually as time passed they died and she starved to death. Not a very nice story but people swear that they sometimes see the image of a little girl peering out of one of these top windows. Right guys, sadly this video has got to come to an end. I hope that you've enjoyed some of the uh, little facts, some of the points that I've put across and shared with you guys. I've not even begun to touch the surface basically with what York has to offer. So if you are from the UK, or you're, you're local, you're nearby, get yourself to York. Honestly, you will not be disappointed. This is such a beautiful and amazing place. And I am so privileged to call this place my home. Until next time guys, take it easy, like I say, stay safe, look at yourself, help somebody out if you can, and uh, peace, spread the word. Everyone, everyone, really.